the S and P's up twenty eight. Volatility down fourteen cents. Bonds down fourteen. To roll or not to roll? That is the question. Let's take a look. All our market measures are sponsored by our exchange partner, the CBOE. And stay tuned because the CBOE and Tasty are going to do something special together very soon. We're going to be announcing it. I think you guys are going to like it. When the strikes of our short premium trade, when, when the strikes of our short premium trade get tested, you will always hear us mention rolling the call down. That's on a down move or rolling the put up. All morning, Tony just commented, wow, Tom, you've been rolling up puts all morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have made 29 adjustments to the upside today of rolling puts up. On existing positions, correct? Yes, yes. I have made 41 trades so far today. 29 of them, 29 of them have been rolling up puts on short positions to adjust my deltas. Mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of this tactic? And today we'll use our research to explain why we do it. There was also an email that came in on confirm and send. And the question was, does aggressively adjusting your positions help or not? And it just so happens that we had a market measure set up for this today. Let's go to the next slide. I said the advantage is marginal, but it can reduce your outlier risk dramatically. Let's see what this piece of research, which is the most, which is brand new. So what is rolling? When the put or call side of a trade is being approached by the underlying, we will roll the untested side. This is when we would close out the side of the short premium trade that is not being breached and reopen a similar position with a strike closer to the underlying price. All that means is we're selling a vertical spread. Right, we're right. buying back our short and we're selling a higher strike on the put side, or we're buying back a short and selling a lower strike on the call side. So if the market's going up, we're rolling up puts, which means we are essentially selling a put credit spread. If the market's going down, we are rolling down calls, which means we are selling a call credit spread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide. Why do we roll? So by closing out the option that is untested and opening a similar position closer to the underlying price, you generally collect a credit and you lower your net delta exposure on the position. Well, actually, you'll always collect a credit in that situation, and you will lower your net exposure on the position. Our goal is to take about half the risk off every time we do that. The result is a lower probability of making max profit. Of course, if you make an adjustment, you are going to reduce your probability of making max profit because you're going to take a wide spread and you're going to make it into a narrow spread. In, and you're doing that in exchange for lower risk and a higher probability to reduce your loss or to scratch the trade. Obviously, that when you make a aggressive defensive role, it is defensive in nature. It's being proactively defensive. Let's go to the next slide. So how does our research support the concept of rolling. Since 2005, we looked at this, 17 years worth of data. We sold 16 Delta Strangles, 45 days to expiration, held to expiration, no early management in this study in order to focus on rolling. We recorded only the trades where the SPY breached the put or the call side. We compared the average p and the win rate. Um, we looked at exiting the trade when the strike was breached, continued to hold to expiration, and rolling the untested side to make a straddle and then hold to expiration. I need to say a couple things about this. Number one, we do this in every underlying, not just the spy strangles. And in most underlyings, you know, they have richer volatility than the spy, so bigger expected move. Second, we rarely ever wait until the underlying um, is breached on either the put or the call side, which means we are much more aggressive way before we get to a, to a breach. And lastly, we never hold until expiration. So there are a couple of aspects of this study that we don't really do, but in order to get it consistent, we had to put those in there. So just remember, we don't usually hold to expiration and we right. don't usually wait until something's breached, but we couldn't arbitrarily just pick some delta, okay? So let's it, go to the next slide. That's a good point to bring out. Yep. 
So before we get to the results, we should point out that this study takes one specific example of rolling, and the results should not be compared to personal trades, but rather used to compare the effectiveness in rolling in general, which is essentially what I was just kind of saying, but in a different way. Um, let's go to the next slide. So here we go. So rolling the trade gave you a better chance to break even than either closing right away or holding with no action. Closing right away would be using a stop order and holding with no action would be just letting it go and see what happens. When rolling, you lose the ability to make max profit on the original trade, but on average doing nothing saw more losses than the occasional full swing reversal. So since 2005, looking at just 16 Delta positions um, in the spies and, and using the 16 Delta strangle, um, when you exited the trade, when the, when the underlying was breached, that's a stop order, by the way. Your win rate on stop orders was, when using stop orders, was only 32%, and your average p l was a loss. That makes, this is only when, when your underlying is tested, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is not including all your winning trades. This, <laughs> this is only for trades when the strike is tested, winners and losers. There's a lot of trades that never test the strikes. Sure, this is when things go horribly wrong. This is when things go wrong, mm -hmm. um, when, when the strike is breached. So the first thing is exited trade when the strike is breached. That's the worst thing you can do. That's a classic stop order. We've always argued here at Tasty that stop orders, it's the absolute worst way. We have stops on spreads because of customer demand, but it's the worst way to trade. Next, when you held to expiration, um, the you can see that the um, that everything kind of middle you know works its way back into some kind of you know normalized territory. There are still some outliers, but your fifty eight percent chance success with the fifty five dollar loss, and then when you rolled to a straddle, and which is essentially taking you know the side up to right up to that middle price, um, that was the the best. In the end, the average P&L was only down $5. You essentially mitigated the risk, and your win rate went up to 65. You actually doubled the win rate from using stop orders. Now, just think about, now again, this isn't exactly what I do, just to be very clear. Mm -hmm. This isn't exactly what Tony does. This isn't exactly what I do. We, we roll early. We When we get towards a straddle, we'll, we'll buy back the guts, and we'll sell the wings. We'll uninvert. We'll recenter. Um, but you can see here, it's there's a little bit more advantage than what I called kind of marginal this morning, um, just because I didn't want to get into a dis complete discussion on statistical significance, um, and because we're using a lot of equities and there's a lot of other factors involved. But I think it's really important here. You can see that doing something is better than doing nothing. Which we've always talked about and will always, I mean, there's nothing that's ever, from our research, ever shown anything to be any different. Whether it's your P&L of your overall account of volatility or the volatility of the trade itself. That is correct. Let's go to the last slide. So since roughly a third of all 16 Delta Strangles saw at least one breach throughout their 45 day cycle, Knowing how to use a defensive tactic like rolling will often come into use. Rolling the untested side reduces delta exposure, increases the next credit, the net credit, and increases the probability of breaking even in exchange for giving up max profit potential on the original trade. Obviously, if you're making adjustments, it's in some form defensive. We rarely make offensive adjustments. Occasionally, we'll make an offensive adjustment, but it's rare. And yeah, yeah, well, that's just because the stock cooperated, right? Maybe you right. lean one way or the other on a strangle or in a position and you're adding something or, or reducing delta one way or taking advantage of that. Yeah. So anyway, you can see here there it was a it's an important study because it kind of confirms and validates a lot of what we do. It, it really reduces the delta exposure, which means that you're getting rid of a lot of outlier risk in the process of doing that. And you're not going to let like something generally just take you down. There's obviously going to have losing trades, but you're not going to let something take you down. Like the bat taking you down. Right. 
Let's take a quick 90 second break and come back. Oh, joy. We got Mr. Scott Sheridan coming in the house. This is Tainty Live.